What's up, beautiful people? Today, we're taking a look at cultural interactions between Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans. By the end of the 16th century, Spain had control over most of South America, Central America, parts of the Caribbean, and what would become Mexico and the American Southwest and Florida. As you can see on this map, this was a vast territory that was connected by Catholic missions and forts, which not only sought to defend Spanish territory from other European nations, but also forced indigenous people to work and convert to Catholicism. An important part of Spanish colonization of the Americas will be the development of the mission system, especially in what is today California, the American Southwest, and even Florida. It would be these missions led by Franciscan priests that would carry forth Spanish claims to the land. An important point, this colonization by various European powers was built on the belief that European civilization was superior, or basically the view that the indigenous people were, there's so much we can teach you. We've improved the lives of savages all over the world. Savages? In their interactions, Europeans and Native Americans asserted divergent world views regarding issues such as religion, gender roles, family, land use, and power. As Europeans began to kind of take Native American land and demand more and more of their labor, Native people utilized different methods of resistance. They're not gonna take it. In spite of European colonization, tribes worked to preserve their traditional tribal culture, beliefs, language, and worldviews rather than accept or adapt to European ways and beliefs. Many tribes worked to preserve their traditional tribal culture, beliefs, language, and worldviews rather than accept or adapt to European ways and beliefs. While their political and linguistic differences hindered their ability to mount a united opposition to European colonization, Native people sought to preserve their cultural autonomy. This included their political sovereignty, their economic prosperity, religious beliefs, and concepts of gender relations. To do this, some tribes relied on diplomatic negotiations and or forming trade relations with European settlers. This is definitely going to be the case when it came to the French colonists that we'll cover in another video. Other tribes used military resistance as the means in which to maintain their native sovereignty. The most famous of this resistance can be seen in the Pueblo Revolt, also known as Pope's Rebellion by the Cool History Kids. By the 17th century, Spain had established settlement in the southwest. Unfortunately for them, they did not find any gold or silver in this region, but what Spain did find was a bunch of native people to try to convert to Catholicism. Tired of the poor treatment by the Spanish, under the leadership of a man named Pope, the native people in the region in 1680 mounted a revolution against Spanish economic, religious, and political control of the region. This was the only successful native uprising against a colonizing power in North America, as the revolt of the Pueblo people led to the death of hundreds of Spanish colonists and the destruction of churches and forts in the area. Spain was forced to leave the area for about 12 years, and when they returned, Spain was forced forced to allow the Pueblo people to retain many of their cultural traditions. Even after, when some Pueblo people adopted elements of Christianity, they often retained their own spiritual beliefs and gods. Over time, extended contact with Native Americans and Africans fostered a debate among European religious and political leaders about how non-Europeans should be treated. They're not going to treat them well as well as evolving religious, cultural, and racial justifications for the subjugation of Africans and Native Americans. Sadly, most of colonization was about justifying the subjugation of non-European people. For instance, Juan de Sepulveda wrote The Just Causes for War Against the Indians, and in it, he justified Spanish colonization of the Americas, basically saying Native people were not fit for self-government, enslaving them was for their own good, and Spain was bringing all sorts of civilization, blah, blah, blah. You know, typical oppressor colonization type stuff. The brutality of the Spanish conquistadors was questioned by some, such as by the Spaniard de la Casas. In 1552, he published a short account of the destruction of the Indies, which documented the abuse
abuses committed during Spanish colonization. Casas was one of the few folks who spoke out in favor of protecting Native Americans from abuse by Spanish colonization. Eventually, other European nations, such as France, the Dutch, and England will seek to establish colonial settlements in North America, and each one of those countries will also come into contact with indigenous people, which will utilize various methods of resistance and accommodation. And in our next video, we will cover exactly that topic, European colonization. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace.